Some people don't keep reptiles because reptiles need too much heat. They don't want the room to get too hot, their house to get too hot, to use too much electricity. So what if there were some reptiles that don't need that much heat? Today, let's go over the top five cool weather, cold tolerant reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I live in Canada, and growing up, the only thing we had available to us in the herping field to go herping and look for are cold weather or cool weather, cold tolerant reptiles. So there is a special place in my heart for some of these reptiles, and let's just start it off. Number five, Mandarin rat snakes. So okay, these aren't ones that I was looking for as a kid because I didn't grow up in China, Vietnam, whatever, the area that these guys come from. But they come from a very cool environment or they like a cool environment. We're talking, if you get above 80, it can be dangerous for these reptiles. Stop trying to bite my ear. In fact, you're gonna see here a mandarin rat snake that I got the opportunity to handle and I had the opportunity to buy at one of the last reptile expos before the world fell apart. And the reason I chose not to buy this animal is because at the time I didn't have an area in my home that I could put an enclosure big enough for this snake that's gonna get four to four and a half feet long that is cool enough. I couldn't keep it in my reptile room because in the summer my reptile room gets 82-ish degrees, sometimes maybe even warmer, and that's not healthy for a mandarin rat snake. Now I will say, this is maybe the most beautiful snake that doesn't produce venom. The most beautiful, not hot snake that I've ever seen. Rainbow bow is right up there, but definitely most beautiful colubrid in my opinion. And they do feel very interesting. They feel kind of like a corn snake, but their scales feel a little bit different. They eat really well from what I understand. And also you can have them pretty cool. We're talking 70, 75 is right around the right area for them. You don't need a dedicated hotspot like number one on the list, which we're gonna get to. Spoiler, you guys probably already know. And these guys will stay active all the way down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't recommend this, by the way. I don't recommend having your animal always at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but they will remain active at that temperature. And what I find super interesting is the elevation, and a lot of people don't really take this into account, but with these guys in Tibet, you'll find them up to 3,000, 3,000 feet above sea level, which to me is super cool, but I don't know, I'm a geography nerd. Anyway, mandarin rat snakes are maybe the most beautiful snakes that you can find in the pet trade that are safe to keep. These guys are freaking awesome. Number four, axolotls. But they're not reptiles, they're amphibians. I know, I know. I did this before too, and I put an amphibian in. This is the only one. The only time I'm gonna cheat, I promise. But I had to mention them because these guys like it ridiculously cold. We're talking about, some people recommend 59, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which to me is kind of low. I recommend 65-ish, and they can go all the way up to 68, some people say up to 72 before it gets dangerous for them, but they're very unique. They're only found in two lakes in Mexico, and they're nearly extinct from what I understand. Some people say severely endangered, nearly extinct. I guess it's kind of the same thing if you boil it down, but they make great captives. They really do. We've got a bunch of them. My girlfriend has these guys. She takes care of them. No, I don't take care of them, but they're amazing. I love looking at them. They're fantastic to look at, to watch. They come in different morphs. You can get them almost totally black. You can get them basically totally white. And some of them will actually glow under a black light, which I mean, what other animals do you know do that, that you could have as a pet? and live under your care, not too many. So I think these guys are super unique and that was, that's what makes them so cool. And when they eat, they eat like, like a vacuum cleaner or a Hoover, some would say. I think that watching them eat is part of the fun. One of the most fun things about these guys is watching them eat. And the diet is easy. You're gonna feed them things like night, night crawlers or red wigglers. When they're babies, you're gonna feed them things like brine shrimp and just, it's not a difficult species to take care of. It's just the fact that I, you need water parameter, knowledge of water parameters, how to take care of them. And for some people like this guy, it's just a little bit more work than other stuff, which are more, more fun. Number three, and one that I've never talked about on the channel before, fox snakes. Fox snakes are amazing. And you've seen them on other channels. I think Snake Discovery has a bunch of fox snakes and Dave Kaufman has talked about them on his channel. And 
these guys are ones that I actually did get to see in the wild as a kid. I see these guys all over the place. And I'm talking mainly Eastern Fox snakes because those are the ones that I'm familiar with. I see these guys every time I go for a hike, basically. They're almost as common as garter snakes. And in fact, 70% of the distribution of Eastern Fox snakes is in Ontario, where I live. And most of that is in Southern Ontario. So although our landscape literally looks like this, what you're seeing right now is a shot of a conservation area where I've seen more fox snakes than anywhere else. This just happens to be in December where fox snakes, you're gonna see them between April and October usually. So this time of year, they're they're going to sleep. They're gonna go find a hibernaculum and they're gonna hibernate or, or brewmate, I guess. Is it's a snake. But what makes them awesome is they're known for being very placid, very docile. These guys are very unlikely to bite you. They're unique because they have this smell to them, which is actually where they got uh, fox snake from, the name fox snake. And although that they're not super common in the pet trade, I think they're going to catch on. They only get to four, four and a half feet, something like that. And it's very difficult to say in a video with certainty the temperature they should be kept at because they're not kept in captivity very often. So it's hard for me to say, and also I've never actually owned one. I've only collected them in the field and then released them immediately. But the evidence suggests that they will stay active in their native range up to 65 or as low as 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And some people will say that they can digest food that low as well. Now I would recommend this. Generally what you'll find on the internet for Westerns, but Easterns are so similar, is right around 75 to 85, somewhere in that range, which is pretty high, a pretty big range actually. But they're not one of those snakes where if they get to 85, they're just gonna croak immediately, like you might find with a Mandarin rat snake. I think these guys are awesome. They don't get enough love. They're a colubrid from North America. Fox snakes are awesome. And if you ever have the opportunity to work with them, I know I would definitely take the opportunity if it came to me. Cool weather reptile, number two, painted turtles. Another one I've never talked about on the channel and another one I see all the time. That same shot where I told you I saw the fox snakes. I see painted turtles actually right on this log right here that you're seeing little drone footage over. Literally, I've seen 15 painted turtles on this very log at one time in the summer. Now, these guys are recommended to be kept at an average turtle temperature. What does that mean? I mean, like what you'd keep a red-eared slider or a yellow belly slider at, something in that range, but they can be active as low as, and I've personally seen them active in the 50s, basking in the 50s. Seriously, that's what the temperature is. So I don't know what the water temperature was and I didn't know, but I saw a turtle and I'm thinking, it's freaking October, what is that thing out there? And there was two of them on, on the log. So very interesting. I wouldn't recommend keeping your painted turtles in captivity at 50. That doesn't really make sense. The entire idea of having animals in captivity is giving them the best possible life, the best possible possible parameters. Or in the wild, they wouldn't get that, which is why you find much bigger, healthier specimens in captivity than you do in the wild in most parts and for the most part. What's really interesting is they can survive up to negative nine degrees Celsius, negative nine degrees Celsius. Now you're not gonna find them out like that. Most of the time they're gonna be burrowing into like a, there's a whole thing. I should do a whole video about how turtles breathe through the winter and breathing through their butts and stuff. Put it in the comment section below if you wanna see that video. We'll do it. But the fact that they can remain alive, not super active, but alive up to negative nine is pretty amazing. You will never catch me out at negative nine unless I am bundled up like you wouldn't even believe. And painted turtles are pretty awesome. And I think that if you're looking for a turtle and turtles aren't great pets for everybody, but if you have your heart set, you're gonna get a turtle of this size and you're thinking a oh, yellow belly slider, red ear slider, what should I get? Get a painted turtle. They have very similar requirements, but painted turtles, a lot of places aren't invasive where red ear sliders are. And red ear sliders are probably invasive because you can buy them for seven or $6 on the internet, which like, shame on you. What are you doing selling an invasive species for that? People, of course, people are gonna let them go. Silly. But anyway, I wanted to give some love to the painted turtles. We never talk about them. Another one that I see all the time in my own backyard practically. They're freaking awesome. All right, number one, this is gonna be a total shock, rubber boas. Total shock. Yeah, I uh, I love rubber boas, and I'm pretty sure you know that if you watch this channel, if you've watched any videos. I finally got one a couple of weeks ago. I am so freaking 
happy. These guys are amazing. They're very unique. They can be in very cool temperatures and need a cooler temperature. You'll find these guys on the west coast of Canada and the northern US. In fact, into northern California, but you'll find them in southern British Columbia as well. And I don't know, it's kind of cool. It's like a boa that you could find in Canada. Like boas in Canada don't really go together, you'd think. They're very small. They stay very small depending on the, the sex, but they definitely don't get big. When I think of a boa, I think of like Franny, like this. I don't think of one of these tiny little guys. They're very interesting because they look like rubber, but the reason they get their name, so I'm told, <sighs> what was he even saying? And the reason I don't have a rubber boa like in my hands right now is because it's in quarantine and every time I bring it in here, I have to sanitize everything and it's already so late. And we've got some really cool things we picked up today. Patreon, you know about it. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be a Patreon supporter too. Thank you guys so much for being Patreon supporters. I love this platform. All of you who watch these videos, I really appreciate it. We didn't even finish talking about rubber boas yet. They can digest food up as low as 62 degrees and they need like 70 to 75 degrees. I don't normally do videos like end them like that. Hit subscribe. The food's here, so see you on Monday.